Welcome. Thank you for joining us today for our Mask Me Anything Voting Edition live Q&A. I'm Dr. Atul Grover. I'm the Executive Director of the Research and Action Institute at the Association of American Medical Colleges, also known as the AAMC. And I'm Ross McKinney. I'm the AAMC's Chief Scientific Officer. We're holding this informal event to try and answer some of your questions that you've been sending to us about voting safety during this election season, as well as how, when, and why you should be wearing masks to help stop the spread of COVID-19. Yeah, since there isn't currently an official national strategy on mask wearing, over the summer, the AAMC released national guidance on face coverings that represent the consensus of leading experts in public health. These recommendations are a follow-up to our roadmap to reset the nation's approach to the pandemic, which we released on July 29th. From a scientific and public health perspective, we know the consistent use of face coverings, along with frequent hand washing and practicing social distancing, is one of the most important things that each of us can do to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and to keep everyone in our communities healthier. So today's conversation is going to focus on the different ways that you uh, can exercise your right to vote and do so safely so as not to spread the virus. We know that even the most well-meaning people uh, may have questions and might not um, be as effective preventing COVID transmission as they could be, so that's why we're here. We're here to try and answer your questions about voting safely, about wearing masks, and anything else that you may be wondering about that's itching the back of your brain. So if you have a question, please type it in the chat and we'll do our best to get to it. We know we're not gonna to get to all your mask questions. That's why we wanna stay as on topic as possible. Now, as a reminder, imagine the disclaimer here, the AAMC is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, which means we do not endorse any candidates for political office. We do, however, advocate for policy and legislation that supports our member institutions and advances the health of all. With that said, let's go ahead and get started with some of the questions that you sent in over social media and other channels over the last few days. So number one, I think uh, a lot of us have this question given some of the, the issues that have been raised recently around potential you know, challenges with voting uh, by mail uh, or absentee or whether that's uh, uh, a, a, just a mail-in ballot for anybody. So our first question is, is it safe to vote in person if I choose to do so, Ross? Uh, it is safe if you follow appropriate precautions. So the appropriate precautions are when you go to the voting booth, uh, make sure that you take along your mask, be prepared to put it on and um, uh, stand as best you can, six feet from the people in front of you. And uh, you should, given that combination, and if there's any need to use some uh, cleaning agent like a Purell, uh, do so. You should be able to be safe because um, you should be able to stay with enough distance. But the key is we're expecting the lines at the voting booths to be um, spaced appropriately um, with the six feet gap. And, and all of the lines that I've seen so far of early voting um, have been incredibly long. And a lot of the reason they're so long is because people are following appropriate spacing six feet apart. So one of the things that uh, somebody just asked Ross that um, you know, I, I have wondered about as well is whether or not we should be wearing gloves. Uh, it, it seemed like I saw a lot of people wearing gloves before and then not as many. And now I go some places and they're wearing gloves, other places they aren't, they aren't wearing gloves. So what should I do? I'm not that keen on gloves. I think if you use um, an alcohol-based uh, hand sanitizer or you wash your hands in a sink with soap and water thoroughly, um, you will get all the protection that you need. Um, gloves can pick up contaminants just like skin can, um, and you're more likely to wash um, your hands than you are to wash the gloves. So personally, I think you're better off using uh, uh, skin uh, sanitizer and or washing uh, soap and hands. water. Yeah. I, you know, one of the things though, that uh, I've noticed is that, um, people are still not great about not touching their face and such. So my guess is it's important to, to make sure that you're washing your hands so that you don't inadvertently give it to yourself if you're picking something up. 
Yeah, and that is one of the advantages of a glove. You're more likely to notice if you reach up with a glove and, and rub your face. Um, but it's a good habit just to remember. Um, your, your virus that gets onto your hands has to get into your mouth, your eyes, your nose in order to, to infect you. Just being on your skin, it's exactly. not going to infect you. It's got to get to your mouth, eyes, um, or your nose. And so um, you can protect yourself by cleaning your hands before you touch any parts uh, of your face. It really doesn't matter how much stuff I have on my hands as long as I clean them before I touch my face or mouth, right? Exactly. Okay, got it. So what about licking the envelope that the ballot comes in? If I'm choosing to vote by mail or fill it out at home, go drop it off there, is it safe to lick the envelope? It is safe to lick the envelope as long as the envelope has been sitting around for a while because the virus doesn't last that long What's uh, a while? Inanimate surfaces. What? What's a while? How long? A while, actually, a while is probably on something, a surface like that, probably at worst, it would be 24 hours. Okay. Um, it's probably less than that. And, and um, you'd have to have somebody have to have coughed onto the envelope in the part that you are licking it which means they had to cough onto the part of the envelope on which you're going to lick, which makes it sort of likely that you wouldn't want to lick that anyway. Right. Um, so I personally don't worry that much about licking the envelope. It's not a great way to acquire a virus, even if you wanted to. So not a very efficient way to transmit it. Um, but just a reminder, if you vote in person, don't go around licking other people's envelopes or licking random objects. Nor, nor should you lick the uh, screen because, you know, you can just no. picture how, you know, licking the screen at, at, at an electronic polling booth could be a problem. We, we did not include that in the original written guidance, but I, I feel reassured that we've now told everyone. This no has been, licking of screens. Don't, don't, don't lick random stuff, including right. screens. Now, there has actually been a lot of interest from people that I've talked to in volunteering at the polls. And so one of the questions we've gotten is, you know, what do I do if I'm volunteering as a poll worker or observer? I mean, what are the precautions I have to take if I've got all these people coming in and out? Is it just the same thing or should I be doing something special? It's a pretty much the same sensible precautions. The one thing you might consider if you're having a lot of contact, if there is not a screen like a plexiglass screen, mm -hmm. if you're sitting there as a poll worker and um, you know the person is coming up to you, um, they've got their mask on, you've got your mask on, you will probably want either a face shield or glasses um, or a plexiglass screen. Um, it's being conservative, but you're gonna be seeing a whole lot of people in a row. Um, and so that's probably a good way because it's hard to hand, use, hand somebody something at a six foot distance. So given the number of people who'll be coming through, uh, a face shield or wearing your glasses would be a good idea. Yeah, and um, you know, remembering that a lot of times people actually take their kids with them. Luckily, neither one of us have to worry about our immediate children being this young uh, and rambunctious. But a question we got from Twitter was, my, my kids are, are one and a half and four, and should I be expecting them to wear a mask? And at what age should kids be wearing a mask? Well, well, the line that, that, that's suggested is two, but you know, it's sort of arbitrary, but a two-year-old, uh, you could probably get them to wear a mask. And, and it's interesting, children are more pliable than adults in many ways, more likely to follow your direction. So if you say, time to put on your mask, they're likely to go, okay, rather than, um, oh, I'm never gonna put on a mask. Uh, it's a violation of my constitutional rights. Very few two-year-olds, while they can be argumentative, are going to get into constitutional arguments about mask wearing. So in most cases, you as a parent with your authority will be able to get them to wear their masks. Although if you're a constitutional law professor, I don't know what your children will argue with you about. It is certainly possible. Uh, you know, I just remembering, you mentioned the plexiglass screen. Um, and one thing I haven't heard discussed too much is if a fly lands on my head and sits there while I'm at the voting booth, do I, eh, forget it. Uh, okay, so somebody else asked, I think, what if I think I might have COVID, but I'm waiting on results? Should I go to the polls or stay home? What do you think? Um, if, if you want to be uh, true to it, I would try and find um, one of the 
absentee methods that, that you can avoid people contact. Now the six foot distance and masks probably means you're not going to transmit it, but you wanna be incredibly rigid about that six foot or more. And you wanna be incredibly rigid about the masks um, because that's how it could spread and be incredibly rigid about the use of hand sanitizer. So if you basically scrub yourself clean, put on a mask and absolutely stay six feet or more and don't your touch risk your of own spreading face. to other people is low. Yeah, don't touch your own face. You know, I, I think the other thing is just to remind people that with the mask that you're choosing, again, you wanna make sure that you are covering as Dr. McKinney showed you, your nose and your chin and that you're getting as tight a seal as possible and that you wanna have at least two layers, preferably three. One way to test that is, you know, again, it, it, part of this is just trying to reduce the harm, but you know, if you're actively coughing and hacking, you probably don't wanna go under any circumstances, but if you're not sort of spewing out symptoms like that, remember, if you can blow out a candle through your mask, it's probably not that effective. So uh, pay real attention to um, all of those precautions that Dr. McKinney talked about. Um, and so that, that's really, you know, uh, again, sort of general precautions um, and you've got to measure that risk every time. But there are certain people out there, we got a question about if, if I'm from an at-risk group. So if I'm somebody who's immunocompromised, uh, exceptionally old, a lot of other chronic illnesses, um, what do I need to do to vote to stay safe? Are there extra precautions that I should take going in? No, same, same precautions if you are older. Um, but, you know, the, the more you can think ahead and do an absentee ballot or do one of these remote ballots where you get your absentee ballot, you fill it out at home, you sign it, you take it and put it in at the Board of Elections. Those are all ways to decrease the amount of contact with people um, in the voting process. So using if you are concerned about your immune status, um, doing something like absentee balloting or uh, uh, ballot by um, uh, early, bo early voting with um, just basically filling out your ballot at home and carrying it in, those would be a good idea. Yeah, it certainly, again, it's, it's harm reduction as much as possible. Now, somebody else asked, um, I've seen this data about, you know, I estimate my risk based upon how long I'm exposed and the distance that I'm exposed to somebody is there a higher risk for me as an individual if I'm actually waiting in line for several hours uh, and so potentially have multiple people going by me or standing by them for extended periods of time? Does that increase my risk if I'm taking those precautions? Probably it increases your risk a little bit, which is why the distancing matters. Okay. If you're maintaining the distancing um, or if people just blow by quickly, particularly if you're outdoors, because a lot of places, but if it's a long line indoor indoors, um, and people are standing close together, well, that's not an ideal setting. Even with a mask, you prefer the spacing. So make sure you're going someplace where, uh, and make sure you maintain that spacing uh, as well as wearing your mask. Yeah, I'm hoping for good weather for everybody uh, in the beginning of November. Um, another question is related to uh, sanitizing. Um, is there some type of standard for all polling stations um, that are, are either national standards or guidelines that centers are following, um, or is all that cleaning uh, approach determined at the state or local level? Uh, I, my impression is it's determined at the state and local level, mostly at the local level. Um, the, the feds did provide resources to buy cleaning supplies um, as part of the election process. So there are resources available for places to do the kind of cleaning they should be doing. Um, the actual activities of doing the cleaning are pretty much going to be set at a local level by, you know, the local voting um, uh, election board and staff are going to try to do what they can. Actually, in most places, people are going to be trying to protect themselves as well as protect uh, voters. Yeah. And, you know, again, I, I think it's um, really relevant to remind people that, as you mentioned before, you know, you, you're not going to get transmission through uh, intact skin on your hands. So really, no matter how much stuff is on there, as long as you're washing your hands and you know not touching your face, um, you should be in good shape. Now, if somebody does feel unsafe, uh, our, one of our watchers here is saying, you know, how do we, we know that we can report 
um, what we see as unsafe polling conditions? Is there a way that we can, we can say something? Good question. I would think that you could report to your local election board to, to let them know because every county has a uh, board of elections. And I think you would be reasonably um, positioned to be able to contact them or the supervisor at the site. Um, hopefully the supervisor will be responsible and willing to take the appropriate um, precautions so that people do feel safe. Yeah, and uh, I, th I think everybody has those uh, supervisors at the polling stations, but uh, again, checking your local um, authorities uh, online is the best way. If you go to vote.org, uh, you can certainly find links to all of those localities, and I'm sure there's contact information as well that you might want to save if you do see any problems. Um, now, my dad asked me, not my dad, this is a listener's dad. My dad asked me if coating your nasal passages with triple antibiotic ointment offers any protection. Is that true? Not one iota, although it will make your nose kind of slimy, um, but it will do absolutely nothing beca because bacteria are not the same as viruses and that triple um, antibiotic is for bacteria, not for viruses. So nope, no use at all. So as long as I'm still breathing, I can breathe the stuff in and it can attach the mucosa if uh, that's the issue, right? That's the notion. Okay. Um, so one of the things that you had just suggested in some cases was if you're working at a polling station, extended hours, extended exposures is potentially using a face mask. And so somebody here wants to know what's the difference between face masks and face shields? Are they swappable? Because you were talking about wearing both. So can I just wear one or the other? No, actually, they're not swappable. It turns out that a face shield can be a supplement, particularly to uh, protect your eyes. Same thing with glasses or sunglasses. Um, but, but the mask actually is much more protective. So the mask, particularly for the person who is, uh, if they were infected, that you trap more in a mask than you do in a face shield. It, it, the, the, the currents eddy around the face shield. So virus is able to get out. If you cough into a face shield, um, it distributes around the shield where uh, with a mask, it's much more likely to be trapped. So it's good to wear the combination of the mask and a face shield if you're gonna have a lot of exposures. That would be recommended you know, for a barber, for a hairdresser, for somebody uh, who's in a position where they're gonna have a lot of close contact with people. The combination nurses uh, on the wards, doctors, these days the ideal is to have a face shield combined with a mask. Right, and, and so that's certainly something that can be additive, but not a replacement for the mask. And if you think about it, a lot of it is kind of common sense. You know that the air is flowing in and out from that face shield, hopefully less so if you have a tight seal around the mask. Um, now, if someone's asking us uh, for you and me, Ross, um, are we voting in person or by mail? And how did you make the decision? I, I'm doing it by mail just uh, because it's it's convenient. Um, it was fairly easy, although I'll, I'll admit in Maryland where I live, I had to give them a lot more information to get my ballot. Um, and, you know, I, I, I will either mail that back in or just drop that off right at the box, which I did in the primaries. Um, without any problem. Uh, and so that that's the decision I made. To be honest, um, it's more time saving for me than anything else. I, I just didn't know how long I'd be waiting in, in line because um, hopefully my neighbors will all be all be voting one way or the other. So I, I don't know, Ross, what, what you're choosing to do for this election. Well, what I did, so I'm down here in North Carolina and um, I was able to get my absentee ballot online and uh, fill it out at home. Uh, I had to fill it out and then sign it. And then my wife had to sign it or a witness. And then we put it in the envelope and the witness had to sign the envelope. And then my wife took the two of them to the um, local board of elections. I've already voted, which means I don't have to pay attention to any of those electoral ads on TV anymore um, because I'm, I'm already done. Yeah. So, um, so it's, I'm in good shape. But I, I actually think it's a great, they've made it so much easier to vote early. Now, the places that have early voting, but lines, you, you see pictures, some of the lines are absolutely incredible. So using the absentee strategies uh, and the by mail strategies does save you a lot of time um, and potential exposure. Yeah, it's one of those moments when you're really proud of your fellow citizens getting out and, and voting, even when 
it's scary and, and people are just taking precautions. Um, we just got a note from somebody who said they still need to make a voting plan. Don't wait any longer. Uh, can you still register to vote? That's all dependent upon your, your local uh, state regulations about whether or not you uh, can register at this point. I hope you can, or I hope you can show up in person if that's not possible. But if you go to vote.org, uh, you'll find a link to uh, your states and um, you'll be able to figure that out from the website. Again, if you if you can't, uh, if it's too late to do that, um, most places will allow you to register in person on the day of voting. Um, so uh, please do that soon. Um, so we got a lot of uh, questions about, I, <laughs> I've seen a lot of mask selfies of people dropping off their mail-in ballots but I've heard in some states that taking a selfie with your ballot is illegal. <laughs> Neither Ross or I are lawyers. I have never heard of such a thing. Nope. You yeah. know, that I, beats me. I, yeah, no, I, I, uh, I think you're probably okay. Uh, I, I have that. a salt shaker on that one. Yeah. I remember the vote is your private issue. Uh, but it's up to you to talk about who you voted or not, who you voted for or didn't vote for. Um, but the great thing is we're all guaranteed that privacy if we want it. Uh, so I don't think there's any issue with you taking a picture of you doing your civic duty. Uh, and and even if somebody tried, I, I call call Ross or I will we'll be careful. <laughs> uh, I know a good constitutional lawyer too, I think. <laughs> um, so... A lot of times, you know, as, as somebody had asked about taking kids with them, um, can I go vote with a group of friends or a, a group I don't live with? And so it seems to me like you want to follow the same precautions as we've been talking about, really, that if it's not a member of your household, you're staying six feet away and you've got a mask on and they've got a mask on, that's the safest approach. But Ross, uh, there's no exceptions here just because you're no, voting. That no, it's, uh, and in fact, when you see where, where do the outbreaks happen, you know, a lot of the outbreaks are people getting together with people who are friends and then they just drop the precautions that they should be following and somebody was infected and didn't realize it because you can spread this as an asymptomatically infected person. You are able to transmit it. Something like 40 to 50% of all transmissions come from people who have no symptoms at the time they're infected. So that's why you don't want even your friends, you wanna be careful. If they've been anywhere where they could be infected, you wanna follow all the precautions. You wanna wear the mask, you wanna keep the six foot distance. You wanna uh, no hugs, um, you know, do the, uh, do the Purell, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, here's an interesting question. Um, and it maybe needs a sociologist uh, rather than us, but you're close enough for us. So <laughs> somebody here asked, uh, we, we've heard N95s with vents um, are not safe. We've also heard that cloth gaiters that people have been wearing or bandanas uh, that we see people wearing are not safe and not effective or as effective as, as wearing something with multiple layers. So um, we certainly still stick by that guidance of, you know, you, you want to go for at least two, if not three layers. Um, if you've got vents, you're letting stuff out, just use common sense. But here's the interesting question that, that somebody raises. If I see someone wearing a bandana at the polling station, should I say something? The likelihood that you would be making a political comment is, it'll, it'll be uh, viewed as a political comment. It right? will be viewed as a political comment. So, um, you know, it's you'll have to use your best judgment. Um, a, a bandana is not ideal. It's better than nothing. It's not ideal. And, and you could look and say, hmm, have you folded your bandana over? Because if the bandana has been folded over, you could imagine getting three layers out right. of a bandana. You just don't want to use it the casual way that they used in the Wild West. Yeah. And certainly, uh, you know, my approach has been if I'm unsure about somebody else's mask wearing or if I see them, you know, doing the, the, the nasal poke over or the chin poke under, um, I just back up another five or six feet. Uh, and, and that's probably all you can do. Um, I don't know if there's any other live questions coming in here. I mean, I feel like we've gotten to a 
place uh, where people have been generally um, agreeable that masks reduce the risk of transmission. Um, there was early on uh, a study, um, you know, when we put that original guidance out about, you know, some of the masks, the gators making things worse, quote unquote worse. Any more follow up on that? Have, have there been any other studies saying that, you know, if I pick the wrong mask, it'll be worse? Uh, there are a few studies that say that uh, the gators are not as bad as that first one yeah. did. The, the yeah. study at, it was a study at Duke that used uh, lasers. I didn't want to mention Duke. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it was. It was. Yeah. I, I even know the people who did the study, and um, but it uh, what they felt was that the gator led to dispersion of smaller particles, and rather than trapping particles, what they saw was dispersion of small particles that might actually transit more easily. So, um, so that's why they thought a gator was a bad idea. Um, if you fold your gator over a few times, you could well imagine a gator being as effective as uh, a multi-layer uh, t-shirt style mask. Um, but you want to have a few layers. Um, and and uh, I think the test that you suggested, the blow out the candle through your mask, is a good one. If you can do it, eh, you probably don't have uh, a strong enough, an effective enough mask. Yeah, but I'm, I'm sure there's at least a couple of gators out there where they are effective and they've made the multi layers. But again, you know, try and try and use your best judgment on that and uh, try and see if you're actually transmitting a lot of air through the material. Um, you know, the question we just got: um, somebody flew on an airplane and the airplane had extra masks. They gave them to people without them. I know I've been in stores uh, that have masks and sanitizer uh, by mm -hmm. the entryway. Um, do we know if polling centers are giving out masks at all? I do not know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to that either. Um, if we find out, we'll, we'll Ross and I'll tweet it out. But I, but I certainly would say if you're in charge of a polling center, it would be great if you can hand out some masks because I'm sure somebody will show up without one. Um, but hopefully that won't be anyone uh, that is listening to this call because they now know. Six feet away, wash your hands, keep your mask on. Um, and if Ross... Did we want to mention anything else or are we good? I think we're good. I think All that right. uh, we've sort of got the mask issue covered. Okay. Uh, very nice. Uh, okay. Um, oh, uh, one live question. How often should you wash your mask? And it, does it depend on where you've been? My favorite thing is to say, treat your mask like your underwear. Uh, you know, you may want to turn it inside out one day, may want to go, but you really don't want to go that long without it. But again, if you're only wearing underwear for five minutes a day, maybe different. Uh, if you're only wearing your mask for, for a couple of minutes, maybe different. But certainly if you're going to wear it for any extended period of time and you have access to one, uh, I highly, highly recommend, you know, you change your colors around, pick up some, some masks with logos to state your opinion if you want, um, but just throw them in the wash. Um, that's the great thing about these cloth masks is... Um, Sadly, we'll be having to wear them for a while um, to, to be good citizens to each other and, and try to keep this under control. Uh, but yeah, you wanna wash that as frequently as possible. But yes, if you're only wearing it for five minutes, you can wait a little longer. I should have brought out one of my favorite masks is one that's got vote written across yes. the front of it. Absolutely. Uh, so that's it for us. Uh, thanks Dr. McKinney for joining me uh, on Mask Me Anything. And, uh, we will hopefully see all of you in masks, uh, dropping off your ballots, mailing them, or showing up at the voting booths very soon. But be sure to vote. Be sure to vote.